What is up, YouTube? This is Vault here, back again today with you guys another new Speed Duel deck profile right here. And as you guys probably saw, the Speed Duel match a few days ago is of the Insect uh, Parasite Paranoid versus the dinosaur, uh, dinosaur Dino Destruction uh, match duel. Here is the deck profile for the Insect uh, deck that I played, and I'm extremely excited to share this with you guys. We're extremely excited to show this video as well since it's the first first deck profile ever since the release of the Trials of the Kingdom Booster set right here. And this deck is extremely, extremely powerful as you guys can see or saw from the match duel video. I'm very sure you guys are excited to finally see it right here. So uh, as always, before we go straight right into it, we are using these lovely green uh, Link Rings version 2 black and green sleeves. Uh, right here for our video and this deck profile as well If you guys are interested in some of these sleeves definitely be sure to check out the Evolve eBay store in the description down below We are selling some sleeves uh, online as well. Not exactly these ones, but really really exclusive OCG sleeves uh, And we ship uh, internationally, so be sure to check it out Anyways for the skill we are playing the Weevil Underwood skill right here and you guys know already It is the cocoon of ultra evolution, which is extremely extremely cool uh, basically taken from uh, regular Yu-Gi-Oh, which was a, a quick play spell, but a really, really powerful ultra rare skill. I really like the artwork. The golden egg or cocoon just looks really, really fascinating and really, really nice to look at, honestly. It blends very well with the skill. Anyways, what this skill does, basically, you can activate uh, the following skill or skills during your main phase only, okay? So the first effect is you can tribute one inset monster from either field, equipped with an equipped card, and if you do, special summon one inset monster from your deck, ignoring its summoning conditions, and also flip this card over afterwards. So you guys can see, um, you know, initially reading the skills, like, oh, how are you going to fulfill it? How, how can you do this? It's going to be so complicated and so difficult. And no, not in essentially. This, um, you guys can saw, see from the speed duel match, it's actually extremely easy to pull off, extremely, extremely consistent overall. Uh, so I highly recommend you guys to watch that video if you guys haven't seen it yet, uh, the speed duel match, because that's how basically showcases how this deck is, is played in action as well. And the second effect is you can shuffle one inset monster from your graveyard back into your deck, then uh, draw one card, and then also flip the skill over. You can only use each of these skills once per duel, okay? Just make sure it's only once per duel. Uh, not once per match, but once per duel. Alright, so that basically is our skill right here, and then of course, uh, we're going to show you guys the boss monster first of all. Two perfectly ultimate great moths, extremely powerful beater. You can special summon it uh, with ignoring its summoning conditions with the cocoon, and also another card which I'll showcase coming up, which you guys do know. We'll also play three metal armor bugs, we do prefer this ratio instead. Uh, some of you guys might think, oh, is, this is so many uh, high, high level monsters, it's going to be very, very bricky. Honestly, I play tested so many times, it's actually really, really consistent because you need these monsters as soon as possible. Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth, you prefer to special summon for your deck usually, uh, which I will explain why. And then uh, Metal Armor Bug, you want to special summon from your hand usually, and I would also explain why. But these you want to draw into, and honestly, drawing into any of these is just great. And having at least one or two in your hand is always really good for this deck. And next, we are definitely playing the MVP card of this deck, three Parasite Paranoids right here. Parasite Paranoid is extremely powerful. Uh, basically what it does, it's a quick effect, and you can target one face-up monster on the field, uh, any monster basically, uh, on either player's side. Equip this card from your hand to that target. The equipped monster becomes an insect-type monster, which basically fulfills your requirement for a Cocoon. It also becomes an equip, so you can use Cocoon on your opponent's monster equipped with this, which is extremely, extremely good. Also, the defensive effect is basically the equipped monster cannot attack any inset monster, so you can use it defensively to stop your opponent from attacking, and it cannot use uh, monster effects that target any inset monsters you have as well, which is really, really good. Next, it has a second effect, which is even better. And uh, But however, you can only use this uh, once per turn, so just make sure you guys know. Uh, if this equip card is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one level 7 or higher inset monster from your hand, ignoring its summon condition. So basically, these are your 5 targets to special summon. You want to see this card as soon as possible, no matter what in any duel. You want to get your engine going, you want to get your cocoon straight off the bat to swing in for massive damage, because this deck is a very, very early game deck. It's a very similar approach to the Blue Eyes Dragon Caller, but I personally think it's even better and more consistent than before. 
and really great. So that's why we play also three Danny Pawns right here. Danny Pawns, what it does, it basically essentially allows you to search for the Parasite Paranoid. And I did mention uh, why uh, play this instead of Gawky Pawn, which is the another alternative similar effect. It's because we do play two Girochins, Kuwagatas, and Danny Pond allows you to search an inset monster with a thousand or less defense. So basically, you have five search targets, and uh, Girochin Kuwagata has a thousand defense. So you can search either Parasite Paranoid or Girochin Kuwagata, making it much more flexible in, in performing your plays overall. So this is the monsters, and uh, we're gonna move on to the spells right here. And we are playing two summoners art uh, to basically search off our uh, metal armor bug. And we'll explain again later why do we want to see it so often in our hand. Uh, and it's ex extremely important that we do get it as many as, as, as much as possible. And it does explain why, um, yes, this is the reason why we want to have this card in our hand and especially summon this one from our deck with Cocoon. So Cocoon brings out this, and then with Parasite Paranoid second effect, you would bring armor bug out. Here. Also, the reasoning is because uh, your opponent can't chain uh, Floodgate uh, to Cocoon, I believe. And uh, uh, let me know if I'm wrong, but I'm very sure you can't chain it because it's a skill card, it's not chainable unless they're uh, using it on the resolvement uh, of the monster hitting the field, but I don't think you can. Uh, also, because uh, Parasite Paranoid's effect also activates, uh, second effect activates by special summoning the Metal Arm Buck, so therefore your opponent can only choose what they summon uh, from your hand to be flipped down. So basically, if you choose, uh, if it can't choose perfectly Ultimate Great Moth, and that means it's protected, which is really, really good. So uh, this is what I do believe, and comment down below, let me know if I am wrong by any chance, okay? I really appreciate the help and feedback with you guys. I am learning together with you guys, but hopefully you guys enjoy the video as always anyway. So only two spells, that's it, and the reason why once again, we're going to see Metal Armor Bug so much is because we're playing three Champions Vigilance right here. We're going to stop their stuff. We want, we're only playing the three up. Uh, we are playing the three up because we do want to see this card as much as we can as well. It's super consistent to bring out the Metal Armor Bug. That's why having a Vigilance accompanying it just makes it extremely great to set up your boards. Uh, this is also the reason why this is a great, great deck to start off first as well. And then next, we are last but not least for the traps, we are playing two kunais, which also uh, uh, performs really great uh, with equipping uh, to our own monsters, so we can use our own monsters uh, to use cocoon. Uh, usually, we don't parasite our own monsters, but we can as well if we need it in dire situations. And even better is you can equip kunai onto uh, perfectly OT Great Law to swing in for an OTK. 4,000 damage straight to the face if you can actually make it happen. It's extremely cool, feels extremely great. One of the first OTK decks, I would say, uh, <laughs> uh, OTK-centric decks, uh, I would say, uh, for speed duels. Although it doesn't uh, happen that often always, but it's a great thing to happen to have. And Kunai is also still one of the best traps currently in the game. So that rounds off for this whole main deck. Uh, 20 cards, as usual, of course. And then we're going to move into our side deck right here. Side deck, we do want to play two Magic Jammers. Uh, Magic Jammer is really great as well. You know, you do get a lot of uh, resources on your hands and uh, Magic Jammer essentially is to stop aerosol. One simple aerosol can basically ruin you and uh, you guys might think, oh yeah, you have uh, three Champions Vigilance, it should be good enough. Um, actually, it's not. If your opponent sides in three aerosols, you want to be more consistent than they are. You want to be ahead of the game before they do and you want to stop them before they can stop you. So two Magic Jammer is actually really great. Uh, side deck is subject to change uh, depending on the current meta. Of course, the current meta is uh, forming right now, so we have really no um, much good. Uh, we don't really have a great idea of what is the best deck, but you know, it's always best to play with precaution. Next, we're playing two Dust Tornadoes, just great for uh, any like um, field spell removals as well as any sort of like stalling uh, cards like Mask of Dark, uh, Mask of the Accurse and um, Spellbinding Circles, as well as um, a huge threat, which is basically uh, Blast Sphere to this deck. You know, your perfectly ultimate Great Moth hitting into a Blast Sphere is the last thing you ever want to do. You can't Vigilance that. There's no, there's almost no outage, so Dust Tornado is definitely the way to go. 
Next, we do play one jar of Avarice. Uh, this deck does go through its resources very, very quickly. If you, if in situations you do get stalled, jar of Avarice is a great card to play into, and then you can reshuffle your resources and then go again, uh, which is really neat as well. Last but not least, we are playing one Waking the Dragon over here. Uh, of course, if your opponent plays a lot of back row removal, which they likely will do, uh, if they do see you having a lot of kunais and champion vigilances, it's likely they might want to night beam you, and playing Making the Dragon really, really helps, and, and it's basically a standard side deck uh, from now on, on a, a side deck card to play at least one of from now on, especially when your opponent plays any back row removal. And because of that, we do have an extra deck to share with you, which doesn't have any relation to insect monsters, but just to basically utilize Waking the Dragon's effect. So side deck, I mean not side deck, extra deck, we are playing one Blue Eyes Ultimate, uh, one Alligator Sword, uh, keeping it a little bit diverse and different consistency, uh, real Senshi, so that in, in different situations and different scenarios you can just bring out uh, whichever you need and Meteor Beat Dragon, uh, other than uh, Blue Eyes Ultimate, just in case, which is unlikely to happen for now, but just in case the opponent does play uh, Al Ally of Justice Core Destroyer to destroy your light monsters. And then we're also playing two Arcana Knight Jokers, which is a, uh, one of the most powerful uh, fusion monsters right now, and being able to special summon it with Waking the Dragon is just extremely, extremely good. So yeah, that basically rounds off this entire deck profile. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below what you guys think as well, what kind of uh, cards you guys play tested, along with the insect cocoon version, what other sweet neat cards you guys would suggest to add into it as well, take out, you know, feel free to post your comments down below. Really, really happy for, uh, for your constructive criticism and feedback and helping making this deck better, honestly. honestly. Uh, as always, use my deck as a reference, as a base to build into your own deck. And also be sure to subscribe to the Evolt channel for more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG and Speed Duel Focus content. We have lots of Speed Duel content on this channel. This is the perfect place to be if you guys want to learn about Speed Duels as well. And I really, really appreciate your support. And it's a great way to tell me, uh, uh, to let me know that you guys want more of that content by subscribing. So once again... Yeah, that basically rounds off the videos. As always, you guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. And this is a Vault, signing out.